Not long ago, Lana Machkish was rehabilitating from a heartbreaking ACL injury and surgery. Lana is a highly motivated basketball player and pre-med student. She wanted to do everything she could to optimize her recovery. Lana's passion, creativity, and motivation impressed everyone around her. Her two missions in life are basketball and medicine. With her injury, her two worlds collided. She insisted that they relate. Through rehab, she learned lessons for life and became even more inspired. So, Kazaya, tell me about your friend Lana. Um, what's impressed you about her as a teammate and now someone who's gone through a pretty long, tough rehab? Yeah, well, Lana is one of the most motivated student athletes I know. Her work ethic and desire to learn are exceptional. It didn't surprise me when she completely applied herself to that demanding ACL rehab. Okay, Coach uh, Michelle, tell us what you were expecting when you recruited uh, Lana for uh, your program. Yeah, I had the privilege of coaching Lana provincial team. So uh, after watching her complete her high school career, uh, we knew that we were getting someone that was going to work extremely hard to become a better player every day. Um, she has a great independent work ethic, so she doesn't need a lot of people in the gym. Um, to get better and uh, we knew that that was gonna take her pretty far in the basketball player that she could become. Okay, welcome Lana. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great to uh, get a few minutes to relax and uh, reflect on uh, what's been a very busy year and a half for you. Um, we're looking forward to hearing about some of the things that you felt helped you uh, through and during rehab. But first, uh, you're back. You're back playing. How does yeah. that feel? Oh, it feels amazing. Uh, it's been a hard year and a half, lots of obstacles to overcome, but I'm finally playing the sport that I love and I'm just really happy to be back. Um, what was the hardest thing in, uh, in this rehab for you? The hardest thing was having to sit on the sidelines and watch my teammates play and practice and know that I couldn't be out there with them. And I just started to worry about where my development was going to go. I thought that um, skill-wise I would um, start to decline and not be as good as I used to be. So there was a lot of worrying and sadness going on the sidelines. <laughs> yeah. And you were the first uh, of your class to uh, book time to go over your, uh, your test of attentional and interpersonal style, which we've used quite a bit. Um, tell us what you thought of that uh, exercise. I thought it was, I was very surprised because um, I remember when I first uh, met with you, you knew everything about me, all my huh. strengths, all my weaknesses from this one test, you could tell everything. So I thought it was really helpful, especially going from a high school to um, a big university campus. It's helpful to know what your strengths are and um, how to build on some of your weaknesses. And it's just, it's a very helpful tool, especially if you're working um, with a team. It's good to know um, everyone and what their tendencies are and what they're like. I think in your particular case, you were highly motivated, you were very determined, you were appreciative, but uh, a bit impatient. <laughs> and I think uh, it helps when your staff know that. Uh, how do you feel about, you know, kind of the role in, in team activity? I think it's super important, especially, I think you have to be, you have to be happy with yourselves and the taste helps uh, with that. And it just helps everybody from your coaches to your therapists to your trainers. Um, they all know what your tendencies are like, so they know how to best help you for, in different situations. So was it a bit of a shock when you found out you had to have surgery? A very big shock. <laughs> I, I initially, I really, I was convinced that it was just a slight meniscus tear. So when the <laughs> doctor told me it was ACL, I actually asked him to check again because I just couldn't believe it. I was in shock. <laughs> uh, how did you improve those early feelings about uh, having to go through this? Yeah, at first I was, I was very upset and I thought that all my goals that I had, that I wouldn't be able to achieve them because of this. And I just started to think more positively. Instead of thinking I was going to lose a year, I was, thought I was going to gain a year. So I had a whole year now to rehab and to get better and to come back um, a better player than I was before. And I saw it as a chance to improve some of my mental um, attributes and just the fine-tuning parts of the game, and I just had more time. So I tried to think of it more positively than negative. And once you got going, I was really impressed with how you maintained confidence and uh, motivation through a pretty long, demanding rehab. How did you do it? I think the key to what kept me motivated was just celebrating all the little successes. So the first time that I got off of crutches, the first time that I walked and my leg didn't really hurt, and just all the little things um, 
took me one step closer to my goal. And so I celebrated every little success. And that really kept me motivated because once I beat one obstacle, there was another obstacle to overcome. And I just, just kept me really determined. Hi. So me and Kez are just here today. We want to talk about some of the exercises that I did during my therapy and some of the pain management skills that I used. Sounds good. So how about I get you on your back on the bed? So one of the exercises that we did with you, um, or one of the problems you had with your knee, was that it wouldn't fully extend. So the surgeon suggested that we be a little bit aggressive with our extension exercises. Uh, so one of them we did was we propped up your leg, and then I applied a good strong resistance uh, to the knee, getting into the painful ranges, um, and held it for 45 to 60 seconds. <laughs> so because this was quite painful at some points, um, I would use this associative strategy where I would listen to the music that was playing in the therapy room and really focus on the lyrics. Um, but worked best was when I put headphones in, and then I would really, really focus on the lyrics and imagine the words in my head to distract me from the pain. And it's an associative strategy that I used was I would manipulate the pain as, um, by picturing it as different colors. So I'd picture it as a dark red, and then change it into like a softer yellow or orange. And by doing that, it would distract me from the pain. It would make me feel kind of better because I felt like I could change the pain. One group that I think it, it might be better at this are the, the dramatic. Uh, uh, actor community, and we have an expert here today. Uh, Isaiah, what what do you think about all this? Well, I think you're right. It's definitely definitely important to be able to actually feel your emotions. I think actually, actor Harrison Ford said it best. He said that since professional actors are trained to actually understand and feel all their emotions, then they are the ones who are actually only true to their emotions, while everyone else is acting. I think we've got a lot of actors yeah. around here. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things uh, we ended up chatting to um, Lana about was uh, are you driven <laughs> or are you drawn because you know driven performers can be prone to quite a bit of stress and have to and so on uh, did you find it made a difference I did I think it's that was one of the most important lessons that I learned was um, you can still be motivated and determined but you shouldn't be drawn you should be driven when yeah. you're driven there's a lot of have to thinking it's a lot of negativity and pushing and pressing and stressing yeah. um, Whereas if you're drawn, it's a more want to. You're not worried about timelines. You're just drawn towards your goals, and you play with more flow and relaxation. And overall, that positivity is just so much better than the driven mindset. Great. So we affected your perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, range of motion uh, is also a big issue with any surgery recovery, or most surgery recoveries. And so it's very easy for game people wanting to get results to strain uh, rather than relax and stretch. Uh, and so there's two or three techniques we want to have you demonstrate here that we think can make a big difference to uh, produce a better response in our bodies. And uh, let's start with uh, the deep centering breath. Yeah, for sure. So um, you can do this one um, by yourself at home or even with a partner, but we'll demonstrate by yourself first. So put your hands right there and now uh, push your leg towards yourself until you can't anymore. Perfect. And now at this point, just take a deep centering breath, really deep, and then let it all out. And as you feel your muscles relax, try to pull your leg more towards yourself. Wow. Here, get you breathing more. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Awesome, that's great. Yeah, that's a huge difference in a range of motion. Yeah. It's clear, it's not just straining, I'm actually stretching. When I reach that reflex point, I can relax. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. And another strategy that I used that really helped was to imagine your, your muscles, like your hamstring and your core. Ima picture them in your head uh, tight and then just letting go and relaxing. As you take that deep centering breath, mm -hmm. and those coupled together really helps you uh, gain more motion and more range. So, yeah, imagine hamstring letting go, relaxing, and the core, oh yeah, core relaxes, you get more and more motion. Oh yeah, one more, do one more. Your knee will be in your nose, keep it going. Oh yeah, good, great. That's wow. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, no kidding, that, that visualization and the deep breath really complement yeah, right. each other. Yeah.
And uh, the third one is the reflex release. I found that this one was the most helpful for um, gaining a larger range. Okay. So just scoot a little closer to the front. <laughs> So you can do this with a partner um, or against the wall. Right. So when I get to the point where you can't, where you can't go any further, mm -hmm. that's here. Now push into me for about three seconds, as hard as you can. One, two, three. Now release, and then with that deep breath. There we go. Wow. Good job. You talked it in. <laughs> yeah. Talked that reflex in. And now go one more time. Okay. Press, press, two, press, three. and then exhale. Wow. One more? Okay. <laughs> Having such a good time. Press, press, press. And then exhale. And relax. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a stretch this good before. <laughs> These techniques that Lana just demonstrated definitely uh, complement the physiological processes that are happening in the muscle fibers themselves. Um, but if someone's coming in and they're really stressed out, um, they're not going to be able to relax enough and you know the circulation in general is everything every body function in general is just not going to be happy when they come in and we want to create that happy healthy environment for healing um, and that definitely happens with these processes that you guys just went through so Lana I mean what did you think about this last one it looked like a pretty dramatic effect yeah it's huge it really caught the psychology and physiology really complement each other and it shows how um, mind body is how we work best Uh, the tipping point's a big, important idea, and I think every professional that works with people in rehab should be aware that it can happen, and be patient with it, because there's nothing, you know, nothing worse than not getting any sympathy <laughs> when you're hurting like that, and it's psychological and mental more than physical. So what, uh, what did you think about the tipping point? You experienced it. Yeah, I think it was huge because when I came to the tipping point, I was so close to being cleared, but I was still so far away. Um, and because I kept failing that one test that I needed to pass in order to get cleared to play, I kept pressing. There was a lot of tension. Um, I was very negative because I just really wanted to get cleared and I was kind of frustrated that I, um, it didn't come at the time that I wanted it to. Yep. And so um, when you came with me to the weight room, because that was what was missing, it was my quad yep. and hamstring strength, yep. um, you really energized me and you gave me some support and during my workouts um, it gave more life to it and yep. so yep. it was almost as if it was a different workout and it really helped a lot to push yep. me through that tipping point. Yep. Uh, that leads us to this idea of energizing. It's one of the favorite things I have of trying to teach people about it. I can't believe as human beings we know so little about it. Like mm -hmm. we're tired. Oh, I'm tired today, and that's we just we just put up with that. Yeah. Yeah. And this guy Glasser said there's four components to total behavior. There's your physiology. You know, you got a breathing rate and a heart rate. There's your feelings, your emotions. There's your uh, you know your thoughts. What am I thinking right now? And there's uh, what you're doing. What are you active? Or are you making things happen? So, in the end, uh, the irony about this one is when we're kids, we're really good at it. You know, yeah. like if I come in, I say, hey, you got your high-speed shoes, Keziah, and you're like, <laughs> I said, show me, and you rip around the gym, and next thing you know, you're like, you're 100 out of, off of a five, you know, when you were five on the, on the scales. So it's fun, it's great stuff, and so I think we should see if we can show uh, people what you guys ended up doing. We'll get Keziah to show the... You just love the bionic woman with this one, so yeah. we'll get her doing the uh, you know, squats, uh, and we'll do enough so that we see her warm up actively more than maybe normal, uh, focus fully on some of the things we're chanting or suggesting to her, uh, and then let her get a break. Uh, sometimes people don't even take a break, take enough deep breaths, to get a recovery going in between, so when you come back at it, you're ready to go again. You do the second set. And by the time that finishes with our chanting, there'll be a standing ovation in the gym, <laughs> and you will be smiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you going to do with this? Hey, no rocket, girl. No rocket, girl. Go, go. All right, let's go. Woo! Go, Tess. 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 This one you're gonna really go, girl. You can do it. You got it. Got it. All right. Uh, the bionic woman, uh, not a dead imagery about that, so that she knows. The bionic woman can love anything, anywhere, anytime. Go, bike, go. 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 Go, b
It's an amazingly important skill, and uh, whether you're a professional athlete, an elite uh, college athlete, or whatever, you're crazy if you don't have these skills at your disposal to uh, uh, bring the best out in yourself. So, do you have favorites? What are your favorite uh, terms, cues, ideas for uh, energizing? What's worked yeah. for you? For me personally, I've just loved that positive feedback to myself and from others. That's always been able to keep me going. Good, good. Wow. Uh, one that I like start, started to use during my rehab was the bionic woman. Yep. So where I would imagine, whatever exercise I'm doing, I imagine as if I am a bionic woman. Yep. My form will be perfect. Um, I will never get fatigued. Like yep. I'm like a robot. And so I would take that energy and take that uh, visualization into the exercise that I was doing. Yep. And for you, this was the machine that was correct. We came, we had a pretty good job with the squats. Uh, and you kind of got you going again. And you got over here, and you're sitting there and sitting there. You just pushing at this thing, like you know. There's a choice in life. You can push through this thing, you know. And then I started with the old bionic woman chant, you know, and a few, yeah, you know, a little bit of yelling and screaming. And you own this machine, whatever. And suddenly she's like, she's, you know, put another third of the weights on again and like smiling, you know. So stuff works. It just works. And so uh, you better show us how it works. Yeah, I want to see this. <laughs> yeah. So I was doing the single leg. So. Oh, the bionic woman's kicking in. No kidding. She start pushing through that plate, <laughs> through that plate, through that plate. She's reliving that moment it, in her rehab where she kicked the tipping point. She said, I still got it. Lana, as we worked through the tipping point, it was kind of a tough period, uh, and started to get ready to play again, um, we provided a deep relaxation tape. What did you think of that? I thought it was so helpful because especially during that tipping point I was very tense and stressed and I was really pressing and so after I watched the relaxation tape I, I've never felt so relaxed. <laughs> I, always, I always thought that I like if I tried to relax myself you know take a deep breath I thought I was relaxed but um, after the tape you realize how you're really holding tension in some of those little muscles and once you let go it's just it's just this amazing feeling. I remember coming into practice the very next day and I was so much more perceptive and I started I played with so much more flow and it was just from listening to the tape once. Yeah. That's great and a little bit longer about a week later you were on the court and uh, and it just still looked to me that you were favoring a bit and uh, and, and not as much flow so I suggested a little video called Easy Speed. Mm -hmm. uh, what did that do to help you kind of uh, get back to full speed? <laughs> <laughs> Easy Speed was a great video because it, um, it showed how in order to be fast, you don't have to press and push. And that's what I was doing. I kept trying to push myself, go faster, faster. But if I just relaxed and ran free as if I was a child and um, relaxed all my antagonistic muscles, I actually ran faster. And so after I watched the video, I remember I came to practice the next day and we were running lines and instead of being one of the last ones down the court, I was actually one of the first. And all I did was change my mentality. Instead of pushing, having to do, be faster, I felt that I wanted to be faster. And I just ran with flow and it really helped. Yeah, it was, uh, it was fun to see. Uh, yeah. The one day that you really strode nice and low and smooth, I said, where did that come from? And you said, in your shoes. And I said, I think it's in here. Yeah. So uh, we got it going, which was, which was good. Um, this has been a pretty demanding journey. Uh, you had a you know, scope surgery in the middle. Um, what helped in addition to the things that have been mentioned? The big thing was my family. Um, they constantly supported me and especially through those hard times when I was upset and I would go home crying because I was frustrated you know my parents were there and they just supported me through everything and encouraged me and they um, kept motivating me and telling me that I could do it and without them I don't know where I would be they're just amazing. Uh, there's now finally <clears throat> more talk about interactive interdisciplinary treatment and support. What, what do you think uh, in terms of uh, uh, the value of this? Oh, I, I remember when they started to meet weekly and um, started emailing and at my rehab, it just became so much easier because everyone was on the same page. Yeah. And even though we were doing different things, I would do something different in therapy, different in workout, um, they were all toward, going towards the same goal. 
and everybody was on the same page of where I was at in my yeah. rehab, what I needed to do to get to the next hurdle, get over it, and it just made rehab go so much smoother. So it's, I'm a very big yeah. advocate yeah. for this because And you know, I, I noticed the difference. I noticed yeah. in the first part of your rehab, you were nervous. You were, you know, very impatient uh, yeah. and, and trying to do everything, which was all good, but not not in the best frame of mind. And, and once our, our team started to meet more regularly and yeah. discuss things in an interdis interdisciplinary way, I sensed you did relax and, and become more uh, creatively focused on, on what we had to do. So how does it feel to be playing again? You, you know, uh, are you whole now again? Yes, finally. I, when I got injured, I felt like I lost a big part of my identity because I basketball was a huge part of uh, who I was and so now that that's back I'm just so happy and this rehab was good in some aspects because it helped me gain pieces of myself that I didn't have. I used to be a bit of a pushover. I wouldn't tell people what I thought and um, after this rehab I really learned that I needed to fight for myself and I'm glad that I have that as a part of my identity now. So is rehab all physical? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> most of it is all, most of it's mental. The biggest hurdles, it was all mental. It wasn't the physical parts of that rehab. Great. Um, so what else in terms of, of uh, personal development did you learn? I, I heard you describe yourself once as a pushover. I don't see that anymore. No, no. And I learned like all patients aren't patient and I, I really wasn't. And yeah. so if I didn't learn to fight for myself, I wouldn't have overcome some of the hurdles at the time that I did. And um, I don't think that way I would be um, where I'm at now if I didn't fight for myself. So that's a big part of myself that I'm really glad that I have now after rehab. Great. And uh, now, what, what advice would you offer to anyone now heading into a major rehab? Um, I would tell them to you got to celebrate every little success. The first time that you are without crutches and your leg is straight and just every, no matter what injury you have, whatever hurdle it is, celebrate every little success because that gives so you one step closer to your goal and it'll keep you motivated. Delay doesn't mean denial. Just because you're injured yeah. doesn't mean that your goal, you can't achieve your goals. It has been so great to have Lana back playing with our team after rehab. She has always been great with teammates and her appreciation, perspective, and skills now seem even stronger than ever. We missed you, Lana. It's awesome to have you back even better than before.